bathroom is one, one way to describe it. I'm sorry, I didn't... I see it more often. Parenti did confirm. Okay. But that was last week. Give him a few minutes or? Well, we have, I mean, I think we can get, we got a quorum. Do you have a vote on the... Yeah, so the... There we go. Now we're good. We don't have to worry about now it. Now we're good. Hello. <coughs> Hi, Mr. How you doing? How Hi. you doing? Hi, Hello. April. <laughs> Ready when you... Okay. Are you ready to go, Marilyn? Yes, I am. Okay. Good, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of the Wooddale Community Development Commission. My name is Jamie Ochoa, and I'm the chairman for this committee. Um, Ms. Secretary, can you please do roll call? Mr. Woods. Here. Ms. Zedko. Here. Mr. Peterson. Here. Ms. Rudnicki. Here. And Chairman Ochoa. Mr. Parenti is not here, or Mr. Babowis. Here. The CDC has a quorum present. Uh, moving on to business items, we need a motion to approve the meeting minutes from March 18, 2024. Make the motion to approve the minutes on March 18, 2024. There being a motion and a second, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed signify by stating no. The motion carries, the minutes are approved. Now moving on to our public hearings. Mr. Conway, as chairman, I request that you serve as a public hearing facilitator. Uh, certainly, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, for our public hearings, all testimony will be given under oath. At the hearing, there'll be an opportunity for the public to offer testimony and to comment. Following the public hearing, the CDC's deliberations will be open to the public in the sense that all are invited to listen and to watch. The public, however, may not speak during the CDC's deliberations. We ask that the applicants here tonight give specific evidence to demonstrate that the proposal meets the standards of approval for the request. The burden is on the applicant to prove the case. Additionally, city staff will provide a general description of the proposal followed by their analysis. With respect to others who wish to speak, you may give an opinion or present specific evidence as to why you believe the applicant meets or fails to meet the standards for the request. Finally, we'll strictly adhere to the schedule prepared for tonight's meeting. However, those wishing to mit submit evidence and testimony will be afforded sufficient time within which to do. Whether you're a member of the public wishing to make a statement for the record or a witness testif testifying on behalf of an applicant, you'll be placed under oath and then begin by stating your name and address. You'll be subject to questions by the uh, CDC and potential cross-examination by the applicant. To allow as many people as possible to be heard, we request that you limit your remarks to five minutes. If any additional time is needed, the hearing will be continued until the next available hearing date. Okay, we're calling tonight's matter. Uh, it's the only matter on the agenda for tonight. It's CDC 2024-0002. This case involves the applicant's request for a zoning variation to reduce the minimum lot width measured at the front yard line of property located at pin 03162090024 to be known as 118 Homestead Drive. And this is to fac facilitate the construction of a new single family home. Okay, staff, um, can you please indicate when notice of hearing was published and whether you have a certificate of publication from the newspaper? Would you raise your right hand, please? State your name and address. Yes, Andrew Coteris, 404 North Wooddale Road, Wooddale, Illinois. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. 
Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, the public hearing notice was published in the March 29th uh, edition of the Daily Herald newspaper and the certificate of publication is on file with community development. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, do we have the applicant here tonight? Okay, great. Um, do you wish to make some comments and remarks in support of your application? Um, I actually have a presentation. Okay, perfect. What I'd ask you to do is if you could approach the podium right over here um, and just speak into the microphone because the, the meeting tonight's being recorded. Okay. Okay, so you'll be placed under oath and then you can begin your presentation. Would you raise your right hand, please state your name and address? And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you. So, I'll speak on behalf of all of us, but okay. um, we're looking, um, we're looking at this lot, and we did a lot of talking, and uh, we then realized it was too narrow, which we didn't know. It meets all our requirements, and uh, here are a couple pictures of what we thought we might build. Nothing is set in stone yet, um, but we did. I, I have some preliminary drawings of the site plan and stuff. So there's a couple of options. Um, we have two options for how to orient the house. Sorry, orient the driveway. The house will be the same, but you just walk in the garage to one side or the, or the other. I'm not sure about all that yet, so I'm just kind of you know, laying out the options for now. Um, then um, it's just kind of a little bit of the interior plans. Um, and then wide variation, we need to decrease uh, the lot width to, uh, to 65. And then uh, I have the variation standards put up. Um, do you want me to read the full variation then the state or? No, I believe the, most of those are in the, in the memo as well? Correct. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're all on there, but okay. I have my responses to all of them on there. Okay. So, and if you guys want, I can leave them up. Okay. I think for, for now, uh, you know, we have the memo. Um, do you have anything else that you would like to say in support of your request? Uh, I mean, we've lived, I've lived in Woodford my whole life with my parents, so we're looking to stay here. We just wanted to build a new home here. We really like the lot. So, okay. Um, we're hoping that, you know, we can build and we can, you know, continue to stay in Woodville. I went all the schools here and I like that I continue on, so that's all I have. Thank okay. you. Okay, um, just just hold on one moment. Does any member on the CDC have any questions for the applicant? How old are you? <laughs> um, very, uh, very uh, impressed by your courage to get up to the podium and, and present. I was a little stressed. I was going five months process. <laughs> get used to it. it, it, it well, for, for some people, public speaking is the number one fear. So, good job. <laughs> okay, not, not right now. Um, staff, do you have any comments or a presentation that you'd like to make on this? We do have a presentation. Okay, so um, I would just like to uh, speak a little bit uh, to uh, sort of the, the compliance with the comprehensive plan and the UDO um, and to provide a little bit more context um, to the applicant's uh, summary of the variation case being uh, considered tonight. So the subject property is generally located at the western terminus of a private street known as Homestead Drive. Uh, Homestead, as you can see here, intersects with Wooddale Road uh, about mid-block between Windsor and Sunnyside Avenues. Uh, the property is zoned R2, large lot single family, and is currently vacant. Uh, the applicant who intends to purchase the property um, would construct a new single family home on the lot, as you just heard. Um, again, the subject property is designated as R2. Um, the subject property does not currently meet the minimum R2 standards set forth in the UDO. Uh, how, however, since it is surrounded entirely by R2, um, this is the most appropriate zoning designation. 
Um, again, Homestead Drive is a private street um, with access to Woodell Road via a 30-foot private road easement, um, which is shown on the plat of subdivision. Um, the applicant submitted a copy of the original 1940 access agreement, which sufficient, sufficiently demonstrates um, the right to traverse across each and every uh, intervening private property to access the Wooddell Road uh, public right-of-way. Um, the agreement requires that the property owners work together to maintain in good repair and at their own expense um, this uh, private road. Um, that said, the city recently partnered with the homeowners to resurface the street, uh, which is currently in good condition. Um, but it would be the responsibility of the applicant to extend the street to provide sufficient access to the site. Uh, according to the concept site plan submitted, um, the street will be extended to the western edge of the, of the subdivision, across the subject property, and the adjacent property at 110 North Homestead Drive. That's just on the opposite side of the street to the north. Uh, the owner of this adjacent property has submitted a letter of support for the proposal, um, uh, and the applicant um, has proposed constructing a hammerhead turnaround to better accommodate service vehicles. Uh, we as staff forwarded this information to the Wooddale Fire District, who raised no concerns. Ultimately, these improvements would facilitate the construction of an approximately 2,500 square foot new single family home. In terms of compliance with the standards of the Unified Development Ordinance, uh, the UDO requires that all residential lots in the R2 district measure at least 80 feet in width at the front yard line. However, because the subject property was originally subdivided in 1921, under a prior version of the UDO, um, it is considered a substandard lot. Uh, for this reason, the applicant is requesting a zoning variation for relief from this standard um, to reduce the, that minimum width, again, from 80 to 65 feet. It would not be possible to construct a home in this location without such a variation. Um, in terms of the comprehensive plan, uh, the property is designated as single family residential on the future land use map. Uh, the single family residential land use category for properties in the southwestern area of the city is intended to maintain the existing character of the neighborhood. Um, furthermore, the development will help the city achieve goal four, objective one of the comp plan, which is to ensure there is housing stock for current and future residents. Um, through development of new owner-occupied and rental housing. Uh, the proposed development would also advance this goal by expanding, excuse me, the housing supply um, and uh, help continue uh, maintaining Wooddale's small town charm. Therefore, staff find that the requested zoning variation is generally consistent with the comprehensive plan. Staff received two general inquiries from uh, neighboring residents. One resident had concerns about the geometry of the end of the street, um, existing drainage issues in the area, and screening of the yard. Uh, staff explained that because Homestead Drive is, again, a private street, uh, the city does not have engineering standards uh, for its construction per se. It would be treated as a driveway. Upon permitting, however, the site will undergo full review by city engineers to ensure compliance with all applicable stormwater management ordinances. In terms of screening, a privacy fence is not necessarily uh, required. Uh, however, um, it may be constructed if the applicant so wishes. And so with that, uh, we recommend approval of the requested zoning variation um, as it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and consistent with the Unified Development Ordinance. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, does any member of the CDC have any questions for staff? Yeah, I have a question. So I don't know if this goes to you guys or the applicants or the, it's such a narrow street. Um, when they build, how is that going to affect the homes that are already there? <clears throat> I can't see big construction trucks going down. I mean, they're going to have to either sit on Woodell Road or they're going to have to block everybody in their homes. Is that something, I should know this, but being it's a private drive, can the police go in there and... We can't, right? Ticket them if they're blocking everybody in their homes. Your your name and address, please. It's Gosha Pucheha, 404 North Wooddale Road. 
Woodale, mm -hmm. Illinois. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Uh, so in terms of the access, because it is a private drive, the city does not have policing power to okay. do it. Uh, but th the shared access agreement requires that the property owners really work together. So usually what happens, like if there is construction for single family, there may be like one-time deliveries, but usually it just happens and they move out. So they happen to move out. So if it so happens that there's any damage during construction, it's really between the property owners to make sure that everything is fixed. This is okay. usually something that is covered under that access agreement. Okay, so we have nothing to do with it. No. As long as it, the, the people are okay with it, it's... Exactly. So okay. it would be, uh, they have that document, which is a legal document, um, that they can uphold, but that would be a matter between them. Okay. And no, not very, just the one call you got, nobody else was, had I think a problem? It was, a couple. It was yep. two phone calls we, we received. Okay. Thank you. Questions for that? Are you the owner, architect, potential construction builder, or all the above? Uh, currently, there is no owner. We're under contract. We're waiting for a variation. So we've been under contract since January. So okay. uh, once we do have the, the it's, it's based upon uh, the variation approval to close. So, so you are the owner? He would, be. he would be. Yeah, he so, would be the owner. So they have a contract to purchase the property. Okay, got it. Um, it's currently owned by another individual. Um, these folks have a contract to buy it. Obviously, what they want to be able to do is build a single-family home on if it. If we don't approve you, you don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, who drew? Who drew uh, the the presentation? Who, who drew that house today? Oh, that house actually, I just purchased a set of plans online. You purchased a set of plans online. Okay. Um, no other questions. Okay. You're going to, if we do undergo construction, vehicles are not going to block access and block people in their homes? No, because the first step is we're going to extend the road. That's step okay. number one, and then we're going to be on our lawn. Okay. So, and plus, the road is actually not that, it's not that narrow, actually. It's 15 by 15, it's 30. We better stand so. Okay. Sounds like you've done some homework. Five months of it. <laughs> I know all the documents back to 1921. <laughs> okay. well, 1921. Well, let's talk about 1920. Mm -hmm. All right. Are okay. there any other questions? Mr. Peters? Yeah, I have a question. Being that this is a private street, are the homes that are there serviced by the city as far as uh, water and sewer? This is probably a better question for staff. Yeah. yeah. So I actually don't know if the homes, if each of the home is connected. The one thing I do know that there is existing water sewer and storm sewer in the homestead drive. So they do have access to it. I just don't know based on the age of the homes, I didn't really check if they actually have an account with us, if they've connected. But the services are certainly available and the new construction, uh, the building is required to connect to city water and sewer. So this new home so will be. they would? Correct. Okay. It's in That's that all. private drive. Okay. Along, along it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, all the houses on that block, is, they're all Wooddale taxpayers, right? Correct. Yes. Why is this a private street? It, this predate, it was in 19... 1921, it was 19 subdivided. So we're never going to straighten this up? Well, so it would have to go through lot sub, uh, consolidation or subdivision. Each of the property owners would have to dedicate a portion of their land to become a city right away. It is certainly doable, but they would really have to come together. There are costs that are involved. Um, so really, the, the trade-off for them is they're responsible for the maintenance of the road. So it's their own cost. If they chose to pursue um, dedicating the street, they could certainly do it, and then the city would be responsible for it. But um, this, this nothing that it, it isn't something that's been requested, and uh, we currently don't allow private streets anymore. But because this one is in existence, it's been allowed to remain, and because of this legal document, these property owners um, have access to to Wooddale Road via the private right. 
In that case, why did we pay for half that road? We didn't pay for half the road. So why did we pay can anything? You, can you zoom in to, um, there is one graphic. So what happened, the one that shows the, um, the, the aerial maybe. Um, uh, I think that may be the closest one we can get. Um, okay, maybe this end, one doesn't yeah. show. Yeah, we have, okay, they're perfect. Mm -hmm. So the uh, property that is a 100 homestead, this is one of the newer homes. It did go through lot um, subdivision, I don't know if Andy, do you remember? 2000. In 2000, so this is the recent house. So at the time when that property was resubdivided, these property owners dedicated a portion um, of their property to City of Wooddale. So we have a very unique situation where you may see, and I'm gonna try to move the cursor, this little portion right there mm -hmm. is city right away. The rest of the road is private. So when Andy mentioned that this was redone, it was actually a partnership where the city paid for that little portion, the rest of it was done by private property owners. So our public works is aware of this. Okay, I have another question. Yeah. How far does the sewer go down that street? All the way to the, to, to the corner. All the way to pass where he's gonna build his house. I, I believe so, based on the, uh, the atlases so that are available that to us. It's there for sure? According to? Based, orders. yeah. On so the if it's GIS not there, atlases. you're not gonna charge this guy for running it down there, are you? Well, so if any, it's, it's the, the atlases show it right there at the corner. So obviously he's gonna have to connect on private property. Okay, and does he need any other hydrants? Are there any hydrants on that block? Um, we checked with the fire district and whatever the existing layout is, they were comfortable with. Yeah, go There's ahead, sir. Actually right in the corner there. Okay. Okay. Well, I just don't want to see you get stuck having to put one in. That's, what, that's actually was a big concern at the beginning of the process, but yeah. And there's no way we can get the street off of being private. I mean, obviously it's being a headache for us for the rest of our time at Wooddale. I could understand if it, they weren't taxpayers, but they're taxpayers. We, we cannot make the property owners dedicate I understand property that, to but the there's city. gotta be something we can do. Yeah. So if it the, gets to a bad point, we're gonna mm -hmm. end up helping them. We can't just leave the street be, you know, yeah. torn up. Right? No, so the four properties on the north of these streets are actually owned by a single owner. And I believe they are the original property owners that resubdivided this property. So there's potential that maybe in the future, if, if they want to um, sell the properties or resubdivide the properties, if there is a request for resubdivision, we will require the, the street to be dedicated because at that point we're changing property lines. So we wanna make sure we bring everything into compliance. In this case, we don't have that request, so we can't, this is a request that's specific to one property, so we can't make someone else. Well, at this point, you have to dedicate it. Yeah, go ahead, sir. I'm um, actually, I spoke to that property. If you, uh, I'm sorry, the microphone, if you wouldn't mind. Going yeah, ahead. actually, if you could just go up to the, just so we can <clears throat> get it all on yeah. record. I had spoken to, um, sorry, I had spoken to the property owner. And I'm sorry, would you like to put the microphone a little bit? Thank you. Yeah. I had spoken to the property owner. Um, on the other side that has all the four lots and he is uh, he is looking to sell that over to an investor sometime I don't know when to tell you but so there is a potential that happening and I wouldn't mind making mine a part of what deal um, if that would be something that's going to happen so because I okay. think that would be better for everybody there so but for times now I'll have to handle whatever it is for there but yeah okay thank you very much for that information Question for Gosha and Andy. Gosha, go ahead. Is, uh, is there another buildable lot west of that lot? No. There, Nothing. What's what's there? There, there's existing single-family homes uh, along. Uh, is it Wood? Oak Oak Wood. Oak Wood. Oak Wood. I can see red now. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. They're they're existing lots. They just have a different this orientation. This the final okay. lot. Yeah. Have we approved or disapproved something similar in the recent maybe three to five years? Oh my! I, I mean, in terms this, of a this private, is a pretty unique, mm -hmm. yeah, private streets. Since I've been here, this is a pretty unique situation because there's really nothing 
they can really do about it. It's you know, if you look at the two lots to the north, they they could potentially consolidate, um, but that lot right there, it's mm -hmm. it's locked up. So. Okay. Any other questions? You know, I do have one more question. Uh, why sixty-five and not seventy? Why not sixty? Sorry, uh, for the lot width. For, for the variance. That's the existing Sh one. Yeah. That's as that's as wide as it is, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I, I, I suppose yeah. I can clarify. Can get Fifteen feet from here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the R2 zoning district re requires any new, newly created lot to be a minimum of 80 feet in yeah. width. But mm -hmm. because this is existing uh, at 65, the variation is required. Got it. I have one more question. Yeah. Is he going to have any problem with fences being so close to the other lot? So we require that fences be located entirely on the subject property. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, if so long as it's within the lot lines, um, it wouldn't be an issue. Working. Okay. Any other questions for staff or the applicant? All right. I'm going to make a call for question or for statements or comments from the public. Is there anybody here from the public that would like to make a statement or a comment? <laughs> okay. Great. There being no further statements of the public, uh, last call for questions. On the CDC. All right, there being no further questions, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing portion. I'll make that motion. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All right, discussion? Discussion, okay. discussion. No, no, so it's just discussion on the motion. So <laughs> we're, all we're doing right now is closing the public hearing. Okay, there being no further discussion on closing the public hearing. Um, we'll just do a voice vote on that. All in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 Okay, all again, say nay. Nay. Uh, okay, the ayes have it. Uh, so the public hearing portion is closed. Now we're entering into what's called the CDC deliberations. This is the part of the meeting where members can discuss this request amongst each other. Um, does any member of the CDC have any particular comments or statements they'd like to make as to this request? Very beautiful house that is being proposed to us. Okay. Any other uh, comments or statements? Okay. There being no further um, discussion amongst the CDC members, we'll move on to the voting portion. Um, and what I will do is I'll make a, a suggested motion and any member of the CDC can say so moved and then we'll get a second and do a discussion. Okay, so here's the suggested motion. Based on the submitted petition and testimony presented, the proposed zoning variation is consistent with the Unified Development Ordinance and Comprehensive Plan and therefore I move that the Community Development Commission adopt the findings of fact included within the staff memo dated April 15, 2024, as the findings of the Community Development Commission, and recommend to City Council approval of the zoning variation to reduce the minimum lot width measured at the front yard line from 80 feet to 65 feet for property to be known as 118 Homestead Drive in case number CDC, 2024-0002. Anyone can say so moved. So moved. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, Marilyn, if we could just have a roll call vote on this. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Ms. Zadko. Yes. Mr. Woods. Yes. Ms. Rudnicki. Yes. And Chairman Ochoa. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, the motion carries. So the CDC is going to make a recommendation to the City Council to approve your request for a zoning variation. Okay, so that this will now move to the what's called the Planning Zoning Building Committee. Um, Gosha, do we have an estimated date on that? Yes. Uh, it should be April 25th. Okay. For PZB. 
Okay, so it will go to the Planning Zoning Building Committee on April 25th. They'll uh, consider it. They'll also make a recommendation, and then it'll move on to City Council. Okay. All right, so thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, that concludes the public hearing portion um, of tonight's meeting. So I will cede the floor back, back to you. Thank you. Is there any report from staff? Not, not at this time. Uh, with that, we need a motion for adjourn. So move. Second. There being a motion and a second, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those that signify by stating no. The motion carries. This meeting is adjourned.